Okay, let's quickly get started. So now we have to form groups, right? So let's quickly consider four people. Now, the groups that I have to form, this is what my ultimate statement is. That if I want to divide them into the groups of one and three, so I want to have unequal groups. So in one group, we have one person and we have another group, we have three person. That's how we have to count how many number of groups I can form here. Are you getting the idea? Right? I repeat my question. So we have in total four folks here. All right. I want to have the formation of groups in unequal fashion such that one group contain one person and the other group contain three persons. Perfect. Okay. So let's quickly see how do we do it. Let me show you like for, first of all pictorially how does it look. So let's say if I take up this particular guy here. Right. Then I know that and I have to form the group of one and three. Then the other three folks can go into the second group. Perfect. That's one way of doing this. So this is the first way when we have this person here as one person in first group and in the second group we have these three folks. Okay. All right. Now there could be a possibility when I can have this blue colored guy or blue colored rather not blue colored guy, the blue colored shirt guy, uh, this person as in the first group and then rest of the three folks in the second group. So that will be the second group or the second way of forming the group. Perfect. Okay. Now let's quickly move on to this. Again, we have these four folks. Now we have this lady as uh, in that group of one person and then rest of the three folks are actually going into this in the second group. So this becomes my third way of forming the group of one and three. And similarly, the last case would be when I have that young boy into that particular group of one person and then rest of the three other folks will be actually into the second group. Are you getting this idea? So what do I have it here? In total, we got these four ways to form such groups, right? So these were the four situations. I hope this is clear to you, right? So in, in like uh, the groups are in the denomination of one and three, right? So we have one person on the left hand side, right? There is a partition I have made clearly. And then on the right side, we have three person. So what exactly I'm doing here in every such possibility, if I have to just count it, see, this was a pretty simple case. We have just four folks and we easily counted it. Now it may happen that the number is very large. Right. And I have to form the groups. I cannot do all those uh, like possibilities here. I cannot draw all of them. I cannot count all of them in that way. So I need to have some direct result. Of course, there is a direct result. If you observe clearly, you pick up any one particular situation. Let's say if I consider this one. Here, what do I have here? In the first group, we have only one person. And in the second group, we have only three person. So what I'm doing initially, I have chosen one person and then I've chosen the other three person. So I have chosen one person, then I have chosen another three person. So I have selected one person, then I have selected three person. And the moment when we do selection, what do we do? We actually get the combinations. So what will be the number of ways? The number of ways will be nothing but, first of all, you pick up one particular person to be put into the first group, right? And then how many people you are left with? Three. And how many people you need to form a group for the second one? Three. So out of three, you have to choose all the three. So the second group can be chosen in 3C3 ways. I repeat that once again, the first group, we need to have only one person. So 4C1 out of four folk, I can choose anyone. So 4C1 is a number of way of choosing first person who will go into the first group, right? So first group is formed. Now I'm left with the three folks and it has to be done in succession. So number of ways will get multiplied. Now we are left with three folks and the other three folks all have to go into the second group. So 3C3 for selecting three persons out of all the three persons. All right. And if you count it, this turns out to be what? Simply four. We have counted that these are nothing but these four options only, right? So this is the first possibility, second one, third one, and fourth one. Got the idea? So what I'm doing, I'm doing a sequential selection. Wow, lovely, lovely word here. We are doing a sequential selection. We are doing a selection in succession. First, I've selected one person and then I've selected the other three. All right, so can we generalize this? Of course, we can generalize this. Let me quickly see you, uh, like show you how do we actually uh, do this in forming the groups. So the first result, number of ways of dividing m plus n people, m and uh, n are not equal. So these have unequal groups, right? That's why we're calling them unequal groups, like one and three. So number of ways of dividing total m plus n objects, person, people, anything, distinct. So number of ways of dividing m plus n distinct objects into two unequal groups of m and n. So the denomination or the size of the group is m and n. What that would be? If I go to the logic, so what do we have to do? We have to form a group of M and then we have to form another group of N. So basically in total from M plus N, we have to form one group of M 
we have to form another group of n. Okay, so what do I have to do? I have to go for a sequential selection. So first of all, I have to select m objects. So out of m plus n, I have to select m objects. Okay, followed by how many objects I'm left with? n and the second group, how many I need to have? n only. So what is the number of way of doing, uh, selecting the second group? n c n. Let's quickly write it. So when I open up the first one, that is nothing but m plus n factorial divide by m factorial into n factorial into 1 because nc1, ncn is not 1 only. What do I got here? We got here as m plus n factorial divide by m factorial into n factorial. So these are the number of ways of distributing or rather uh, dividing m plus n unequal or distinct objects into group size of m and n. So total m plus n, right? And the group sizes are m and n. So the number of ways are factorial m plus n divided by factorial m factorial n, right? It's nothing but sequential selection only, but I want you to remember this formula directly in the examination hall. Let's generalize it into one more step. So let's say this time we have total m plus n plus p distinct objects where m and p are not equal. So I have unequal groups or groups of unequal sizes. So I want to have them into three unequal groups of sizes m, n and p. If I go according to the formula, the first one, if I go according to the first one, the first one in total we have m plus n and the group sizes were m and n. So I can say that the number of ways are factorial m plus n divided by factorial m into factorial n. Can you uh, like generate the similar type of sense here? Let me quickly write the formula. Can it be written directly like that? If I have total m plus n plus p objects, so I'll write this m plus n plus p factorial divide by first group size m factorial, second group size n factorial, third group size p factorial. Yes, this is exactly the formula. Let me quickly show you how it comes. See, out of m plus n plus p, I will be first of all choosing m. Now, how many I'm left with? n plus p. So, out of n plus p, I'll be choosing this as n. Now, how many I'm left with? Simply p. So, out of p, I'll be choosing another p, which is pcp. When you solve these three, this, this multiplication, the entire thing, what do you get? You will get this formula. Are you getting the point what I'm trying to say here? This is nothing but the sequential selection or the selections in succession. Right? So total number of objects will remain in the numerator as factorial. That is m plus n plus p divided by first group size m factorial, second group size n factorial, third group size p factorial. When you simplify this quantity, you'll reach here only. Alright? So I want every one of you to remember this formula directly here. Please note it down carefully. Right? I repeat once again, if I have m plus n plus p objects and the group sizes are m and r p, the number of ways of doing so will be factorial of m plus n plus p divided by factorial m factorial n factorial p. All right, perfect. Once again, these are the four folks are here. Um, they, they are going to help me in future as well. Okay, so what is my scenario? I want to have these four folks to be distributed in two equal groups. Right, okay. So needless to say, if I have four folks and I want to have them into two equal group, what will be the size of the group? Two and two. Okay. So let's see how does the pictorial representation for this. So either we choose these two, right, as in the first one, first group. So left hand side is the first group. And the second group, by default, the other two folks only, right. Or it may happen that I choose the women and the boy initially. So basically, we flip them into groups. Now, there's a question arises here. What is that question? If you observe these first two types of grouping, these first two types of grouping, they are nothing but the identical grouping. I'm actually repeating itself. Why? If I'm the observer, I just want to have the two groups, right? I want to create, let's say, a competition. I want to have two teams, right? And I just want to have two teams in front of me. And if I just want to have two teams, so what is happening in the first case, these two person have created one team and the other two person have created for a second team, right? For me, this is the observation. And the second time when I see this, these two women are into, or sorry, these two folks are into the first group and these two folks are into the second group. So I'll say, man, you have already repeated, right? right? You, you guys were already there in, in form of groups only, right? So this distribution was already with me. Why are you coming up again? What is happening here? Every such grouping, when we have equal sizes, every group will be repeating itself. So if I have two groups of equal sizes, they will repeating itself in factorial two ways. Let's observe the other ones quickly. Okay, very quickly. 
So let's say the next situation we have these two. And if I flip them, this is will be the other two groups. Uh oh. All right. Okay. Now, similarly, if I go for the other two, what is happening here? So now, if I choose these two, can you see them? Right? These two persons and the other two in the other group. And I'm flipping them now. So when I flip them, what will I get? I'll get this. Okay. What is happening? These two are nothing but the same groups. These two are nothing but the same group. And these two are nothing but the same groups. So a particular type of grouping or distribution is repeating itself in factorial 2 manner. Why? Because I have similar size groups. Right? And that's where the picture comes into view. So if I have two groups of equal sizes, I need to divide by factorial 2. If I have three groups of equal size, I need to divide the total number of ways divided by 3 factorial. Exactly. Right? I cannot just write the formula as 4C2 into 2C2. Or I cannot just write the formula as 4 factorial by 2 factorial into 2 factorial. Why? Because by doing so, I will be repeating it. You think in this way. Let me put it up in, the, in another representation. So we have to form a group of 2 and 2. Perfect. So let's say if I choose them as 4C2 followed by 2C2. So in 4C2, what had happened, if I let's consider the, only simply the last one, these two. So by 4C2, I have picked up this maroon colored top women and this blue shirt person, right? Then by default in 2C2 ways, the other group comes here. But that can also happen that there is also a possibility that in this 4C2, I would have chosen this boy, yellow colored t-shirt boy and this green colored t-shirt person in the first group. And then by default, the other two folks would have gone in the second group. Are you getting my point? So by in this 4C2, I can choose these two as the first one. By default, the other two will become in the second group. And similarly, in this 4C2, I can choose these two in the first group. Then by default, the other one will be in the second group. But if you term, if you observe, right, if, if there is a third person observer, what he will say or she will say, he or she will say that these are nothing but the same grouping only. Right? That's why we cannot report this answer. Because every group is repeating itself in how many ways? Factorial 2 ways. So I need to divide this by factorial 2. Okay. As many equal groups are there, I need to divide by that factorial because they look to be different groups. But they are actually the same groups, right? These two look to be different groups. These two. But they are nothing but the similar groups only. I didn't get my point. So the total number of ways that 4 factorial divide by 2 factorial, 2 factorial, the, from the previous formula, if I try to apply it, that won't be justified. Right? Because every group will be repeating itself in factorial two ways. Had it been three groups of equal sizes, they would have been repeating itself in factorial three ways. Exactly. So from here, if I have to write the total number of ways, what will I write my total number of ways? Total number of ways will become nothing but is equal to 4C2, selecting any two persons for first group. And by default, the rest of the two will go into the second group. And these total number of ways have to be divided by factorial two. Right? So what do I got it here? We got this here as 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay, so this becomes my answer. Perfect, whatever it is. Or we get this effectively as simply 3. See, the numerical value gives you what? 3. And that's how these 3 groups are there. So, 1, type of grouping. 2, type of grouping. 3, type of grouping. These are the only 3 type of grouping that we can have in this case with these 4 folks. Got the idea? Understood it? Perfect. Okay, so let me quickly generalize it as a result and I want you to remember this result directly, directly use it into the examination hall. That explanation I've given you for the reinforcement of your knowledge, right, for the, your better understanding. So for the formation of groups, now I'll be giving you a few results. And if I have groups of equal sizes, let's say if I have two n things and I want to distribute them into two equal groups, n and n. So what should be the number of ways? The number of ways of doing so should be nothing but equal to 2ncn by 2ncn, I'll be selecting n objects first. First, I've chosen n objects and I've formed them one group. Then by default, the other n objects has to be chosen in total. That is ncn for the second group. But as I said, since I have same denomination n and n here. So what will happen? Every combination or every grouping will be repeating itself in factorial 2 ways. Right? So I need to divide it by factorial 2. What have I got it here? I get it here as factorial 2 and divide by factorial n, factorial n, right? Okay, let me quickly simplify if you want to just show this. So, ncn is 1, factorial 2 is 2 and 2ncn is nothing but is equal to what? Factorial 2n, divide by factorial n, factorial n, factorial 2, right? This is nothing but which is written 